In this animation, we'll be examining how voltage gain and output voltage can be calculated for the inverting operational amplifier circuit. Here we have the schematic symbol for a 5-terminal op-amp. This amplifier has two power terminals. In most cases, both positive and negative supply voltages can be used to power this device. The single output terminal is capable of both sourcing and sinking current. This device also has two input terminals, the non-inverting input and the inverting input. These input terminals ideally have infinite input impedance. This means that no current will flow in or out of them. Another important characteristic of these two input terminals is that voltage at the inverting input will equal the voltage at the non-inverting input. This will be true of all feedback type applications. We will now move on to examine the inverting amplifier configuration and how its output voltage can be determined. Here we have the traditional inverting amplifier circuit made with an op-amp. In this configuration, the input signal is connected to the inverting input, and the non-inverting input is connected to ground. In addition to the op-amp itself, we have two resistors in this circuit. The first resistor is connected between the input and the non-inverting terminal of the op-amp, and is often referred to as the input resistor, RI. The other resistor in the circuit is connected between the non-inverting input and the amplifier's output terminal. This resistor is often referred to as the feedback resistor, RF. We will now create an equation that will provide the output voltage with respect to the input voltage appearing at the input pin for this circuit. When creating this relationship, we must keep in mind the three characteristics of the op-amp that we have previously mentioned. Since the non-inverting terminal is connected directly to ground, the voltage at the inverting terminal will be virtually equal to zero volts. Since no current can enter or leave the input terminals, any current flowing through RI must also flow through RF. Lastly, the output's capable of sinking or sourcing current. This means that the output voltage with respect to ground will be equal to the voltage drop across the RF resistor, since the inverting input is at zero volts. Let's assume that we have a negative applied voltage. That would mean that current would flow in the direction shown here. The polarity for the voltage drops across RI and RF would be as shown. The resulting output voltage is of opposite polarity to that of the input voltage. Now let's assume an applied positive input voltage. This would mean that current would flow in the opposite direction. The voltage drops for the two resistors would now have the polarity shown here. Once again we can see that the output voltage will be of opposite polarity to that of the input voltage. This means that the output will equal VRF in magnitude, but be of opposite polarity to that of the input. This is why this configuration is referred to as an inverting amplifier. We can use Ohm's law to state the value of VRF in terms of the resistance and the current flowing through it. We also know that the current through RI is equal to the current through RF, so we can use Ohm's law to express the current through RF as V in over the value of RI. Therefore, the output voltage equation for this circuit configuration can be expressed as V out is equal to V in times negative RF over RI. The voltage gain, or AV, of this amplifier is equal to the ratio of the output to the input voltage. Next, we substitute our output voltage equation into our equation for gain. We then simplify the equation to arrive at a final relationship for a voltage gain of AV equals negative RF over RI.